Okay, uh, last Tuesday we were studying uh, how, how do we convert between mass basis and molar basis. So let's review what we did. The number of moles, which is N, is going to be mass divided by molecular weight. So this is how we, you know, the convert between the number of mole and mass of the system. This molecular weight can be found from table A1. So if you want to determine how many moles in your system when you have, for example, 10 kilograms of oxygen. And if you want to determine how many moles of oxygen in the system, then we can use this equation. By the way, one mole means, one mole means when you have 6.022 times 10 to 23 numbers of molecules in a system that is one mole. If you have one kilomole, means that you have 6.022 times 10 to 26. So if you have these many numbers of molecules in the system, that is one kilomole. So if you have 10 kilograms of oxygen, you can use this equation to determine how many kilomoles of oxygen in your system. So let's do that. So if we use this equation, N is the mass of the system, 10 kilograms, divided by the molecular weight of oxygen. If you can go to table A1 to determine the molecular weight, of your system. So in this case, we have oxygen. This one, the molecular weight of oxygen is 32, 32 kilograms per kilomole. So this one is 32 kilograms per kilomole. <clears throat> And 10 divided by 32, so we get 0 0.3125. So if you do the calculation, we have 0 0.3125 kilomoles of oxygen in 10 kilograms. So this is how you convert mass to number of moles. The next thing that we studied is the mass fraction and the mole fraction. The mass fraction is when you have a mixture, what is the relative amount of each component in the mixture? So if we have air, let's say that it is a mixture of 21%. Let's say, you know, that you have a mixture of 20% oxygen and 
nitrogen by mass. So this, this is a mass fraction. Then the mass fraction of oxygen is going to be 0.2, and the mass fraction of nitrogen is going to be 0.8. Then what is the mole fraction of oxygen and nitrogen? If you want to determine the mole fraction, by the way, mole fraction is Y. So Y of oxygen means the number of moles of oxygen divided by N. If you see there is no subscript, that means that this is the total number of moles, which is N of oxygen plus N of nitrogen. So if you want to determine the mole fraction of oxygen, this is how we do. Let's assume that, you know, that we have one kilograms of mixture, one kilograms of O2 and N2. That means if the mole fraction, if the mass fraction is 20%, the mass of the oxygen is going to be, so mass of oxygen is going to be 0.2 kilograms. So this is the assumption. So if you assume that we have one kilogram, so whenever you want to convert a mass fraction into a mole fraction, the simplest way is you assume the total mass of the system and calculate the mass of each component, which is oxygen, and the mass of nitrogen is 0.8, 80%. Then you can calculate the number of moles of oxygen and the number of moles of nitrogen, and then calculate the mass, uh, the mole fraction. So, how do we determine the number of moles of oxygen? By using this equation. N is mass divided by molecular weight. So N of oxygen is going to be the mass of oxygen divided by the molecular weight of oxygen. We already know the molecular weight of oxygen is going to be 32 kilogram per kilomole. So this is going to be 0 0.2 kilograms divided by 32 kilograms per kilomole. So if you do the calculation, 0 0.2 divided by 32, we get 0 0.00625. 0 0.00625. Kilo more. And we can also calculate the number of moles of nitrogen, the other component in the mixture. So let's do that. N of nitrogen is going to be the mass of nitrogen divided by the molecular weight of nitrogen then what is the mass of nitrogen in the mixture? If you assume that the total mass of the mixture is one kilogram, we have 0.8 kilograms of nitrogen. So we can write 0.8 kilograms. And the molecular weight of nitrogen is, there's a nitrogen. The molecular weight is 28.01. Twenty-eight point oh one kilogram per kilomole. From this, you can determine the number of moles, the number of moles of nitrogen. So, if you do 0 0.8 divided by twenty-eight point oh one, that is zero point zero two eight six two eight five six. So, this one is. 0 0.02856 kilomoles.
spent, you just calculated the number of moles of nitrogen and oxygen in a mixture of one kilogram. If you know the mass fractions, which is 20% and 80%, now you can determine the mole fraction. The mole fraction of oxygen is going to be the number of moles of oxygen divided by the total number of moles. So what is the number of moles of oxygen? This one. 0 0.00625 kilomole divided by the total number of moles. How do we calculate that? This one plus this one. 0 0.0. 0625 plus 0 0.02856. So we get 0 0.03481. 0 0.03481 kilomole. Then you can calculate the mole fraction of oxygen. 0 0.00625. Divide by 0 0.03481. We get 0 0.1795. That is the molar fraction of oxygen. Then the molar fraction of nitrogen can be determined can be determined by the number of moles of nitrogen divided by the total number of moles, which is this one, 0 0.02856 kilomoles divided by the total number of moles, 0 0.03481 kilomoles. Then it is 0 0.8205. So about 18%. 18% approximately, that is the molar, molar fraction per mole, and approximately 82% per mole. So if you compare this one and the mass fraction, 20% by mass, 80% by mass, 18% by mole, 82% by mole. So that's how you, you know, the convert between mass and more, okay? So that's what we studied last Tuesday. Then let's review some equations that we studied in thermodynamics one on a molar basis. So what was the easiest equations that we studied in thermodynamics one. The ideal gas equation of a state. Oh, by the way, before we uh, move on, you know that we need to talk about the apparent molecular weight. So the molecular weight of, the molecular weight of oxygen, the molecular weight of oxygen is 32 kilogram per kilomole, and the molecular weight of nitrogen is 28.01 kilogram per kilomole. Then, what is the molecular weight of the mixture of oxygen and nitrogen? It depends on the ratio, and we can use this ratio this one and this one. So if you want to determine the average molecular weight of a mixture, then we can use this equation. The mole fraction of one component, oxygen in this case, times the molecular weight of that component plus the mole fraction of the other component, N2, times the molecular weight of N2. So that's how we determine 
the average molecular weight. So this one, the molar fraction is going to be 0 0.1795, which is here. And the mole fraction of nitrogen is this one, 82%, 0 0.8205. And the molecular weight of oxygen is going to be 32. The molecular weight of nitrogen is going to be 28.01. Zero point one seven nine five times thirty two plus zero point eight two zero five times twenty eight point zero one, and we get twenty eight point seven three. Kilograms per kilomole, then we can use this molecular weight for the mixture of oxygen and nitrogen at this molar ratio, okay? Then let's study the ideal gas equation that we reviewed. So in thermodynamics one, we studied the ideal gas equation of a state, which is PV is RT. In other words, PV is MRT. You all know this lowercase v represents specific volume, which is actual volume divided by mass. So this is the ideal gas equation on a mass basis. In this case, this r is going to be the gas constant. And this gas constant is material specific. So we have a gas constant for nitrogen. We have a different gas constant for oxygen. We have a different gas constant for, you know, the carbon dioxide. So each gas has its own gas constant. On a molar basis, on a molar basis, the ideal gas equation is going to be PV is N instead of mass we have we have n which is the number of mole times r t but this r is different from this r this one is r bar this r bar is a universal gas constant so there is only one universal the gas constant. There is no universal gas constant for oxygen, universal gas constant for nitrogen. There is only one R bar, which is 8.314 kilojoule per kilomole Kelvin. So this is the universal gas constant. If we use this ideal gas equation on this molar basis, We use this equation rather than this one. So this one is mass basis. So depending on you know the how you analyze your system, if you use if you analyze it on a more mass basis, this is the equation that you studied in thermodynamics one. If you analyze a thermodynamic system on a molar basis, that's what you are going to do in thermodynamics two. This is the equation, okay?
then which one is more convenient? It depends. It depends. If you have a single molecule system, like you know, the um, just water, just oxygen, just nitrogen, like the way we studied thermodynamics in thermal one last year, you can use the mass basis. This one, no problem. However, if you have a mixture, if you have a mixture, especially when you have a chemical reaction, this molar basis is much easier to use. Of course, this is your first time to see, maybe second time, I don't know, but in thermodynamics, it, this is going to be the first time. This is the first time to see this ideal gas equation on a molar basis. Looks a little unfamiliar, but once you get to know that, it will be convenient to use this one when you have a mixture, whenever there is a chemical reaction. Okay? So let's study this ideal gas equation for a gas mixture. So this is the you know the ideal gas equation. Looks a little bit different because you know the this one is divided by volume. So this is the same as PV is n r bar t. By the way, you know that sometimes you know that you have a you have a, a governing equation on a mass basis. Sometimes you have a governing equation on a molar basis to distinguish between. A mass basis equation and molar basis equation, we usually add the bar to show that this is on the molar basis. So, for example, what is the gas constant of air that we studied in thermodynamics one? If you remember, the gas constant of air, R of air, on a mass basis was 0.287 kilojoule per kilomole, a kilogram Kelvin. So if you look at this gas constant, the unit is kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. You see this kilogram. So this gas constant is on mass, on a mass basis. So this is just R. But if you look at this universal gas constant on a molar basis, look at the unit. This one is kilojoule per kilogram. Kelvin, on the other hand, this one is kilojoule per kilomole Kelvin. So this one you can see, since this one is kilomole instead of kilogram, you can see this gas constant is on a molar basis. In that case, you can add a bar to show that this is going to be kilomole rather than kilogram. Then how can we use this ideal gas equation for a mixture? Then what is the difference between you know the uh, a single you know the pure single gas system and a mix in mixture system? So if you have a single gas system, just oxygen, then Applying this ideal gas equation has no problem. It's very straightforward. So this one is going to be a mass basis. We have a PV is MRT. So this P is going to be the pressure of this oxygen. This volume is the volume of this oxygen. This M is going to be the mass of oxygen. This R is going to be the gas constant of oxygen. This T is going to be the temperature of this oxygen. So it's very simple, straightforward. But what about if you have a mixture? This time we have oxygen plus nitrogen. Then what kind of pressure are we going to use? Are we going to assume that the pressure of oxygen in the in in the in, in in this container 
and the pressure of nitrogen, are they the same? Are they different? What is the relation between the pressure of oxygen and the pressure of nitrogen in this mixture? We have, that's what we need to you know, the, uh, determine, right? What about the volume? What is the volume of this oxygen in this tank? What is the volume of this nitrogen in this tank? Are they the same? Are they the same as the volume of this box? Or do they share, you know, the half and half? Like, you know, the, if the volume of this box is one cubic meters, should we say the volume of oxygen is one cubic meter or 0.5 cubic meters or 0.3? How do we know? So that makes analyzing this mixture complicated. So this one, we don't have to worry about that. The volume of oxygen is going to be exactly the same as the box. The pressure of the oxygen, there's only one pressure value. Temperature of this oxygen, there's only one, pre one temperature. Mass is conserved. Gas constant is constant. So no problem here. That's thermal one. We know thermal one is easy, but now we have a mixture. What is the volume of this one? What is the pressure of this one? The number of moles. We know they are different. The number of moles of oxygen, the number of moles of nitrogen, they are different. We even calculated that from the previous analysis. We calculated the mole fraction of oxygen, the mole fraction of nitrogen, they are not the same. So we know the number of moles of this oxygen, the number of moles of this nitrogen, they are not the same. The mass of oxygen, the mass of nitrogen, they are not the same. What about gas constant? Should we use gas constant of oxygen or should we use the gas constant of nitrogen? What about temperature? If the box inside is 30 degrees Celsius, should we say oxygen is at 30 degrees Celsius and nitrogen is at 30 degrees Celsius? Or should we say, since we are calculating the sum, Oxygen is 15, nitrogen is 15, so 15 plus 15 is going to be 30. So those are the things that we need to understand. And if we use this mass basis, the ideal gas equation on a mass basis, analyzing this mixture is going to be complicated. Because we have no idea about this you know, gas constant R. Are we going to use gas constant R for oxygen, nitrogen? We know they are different, right? So, if you have a mixture, it is convenient to use this ideal gas equation on a molar basis. So, what is that equation? PV is not M anymore. This one is mass basis. If you have a mixture, it's going to be N the number of moles times universal gas constant, R bar. So there is no R of oxygen, there's no R of nitrogen, just one R bar. That's enough for this molar basis, time, temperature. So now the question is, can we apply this ideal gas equation for the entire system, or should I apply this ideal gas equation only for the oxygen, and again, for nitrogen. So the simple answer is, we assume that each component behaves as an ideal gas, as if it were alone at temperature T and volume V. So in our assumption is, we can make this one for oxygen. We can make another one for nitrogen. Okay, then how do we determine the pressure of oxygen, the volume of oxygen, etc.? The first, we know according to this one, as if each component is alone at temperature T and volume T, uh, volume V. So this V is going to be the entire volume of this tank. 
this V for nitrogen, also the entire volume in the system. So we assume that oh, there's only nitrogen or there's only oxygen. So if the box is, if the box size is, let's say one cubic meters, when you apply this PV and RT for this oxygen, this V is gonna be one cubic meters. And when you apply this PV and RT for this nitrogen, it is also one cubic meters. Okay. What about temperature? It's the same. As if it is alone at temperature T. So if the temperature in the system is, let's say, 27 degrees Celsius, this T is going to be 27. Now, when we use the ideal gas equation, we use Kelvin. So when I say 27 degrees Celsius, then it's going to be, no, it is 300 Kelvin. Then this T for oxygen is going to be 300 Kelvin. This T for nitrogen is going to be 300 Kelvin. What about gas constant? On a molar basis, there is no difference in gas constant R. There's only one gas constant, universal gas constant. So we don't need to worry about R of oxygen, R of nitrogen. That's what we did on a mass basis. On a molar basis, R is going to be always one number, 8.314 kilojoule per kilogram, a kilomole Kelvin. This one also the same, 8.314 kilojoule per kilomole Kelvin. Okay, looks pretty simple. Now, the remaining two are gonna be P and N. Now, why, why we study in you know, the P and N the last? Because they are a little bit complicated. So let's look at the next line. It says, accordingly with the Dalton model, the individual components do not exert the mixture pressure P, but rather a partial pressure. Partial pressure. So if we say the pressure inside the box is going to be 100 kilopascal. Then, is this P 100 kilopascal? No. This P should be the partial pressure of oxygen. This P should be the partial pressure of nitrogen. So pressure is not constant. Pressure is not uniform. So there's a partial pressure by oxygen. There's a partial pressure by nitrogen. And how do we determine the partial pressure of each component by using this equation. P, the partial pressure of I component is going to be Y. What is Y? The mole fraction of that component times the total pressure, the mixture pressure. So partial pressure is going to be the, uh, the, the mole fraction times the total pressure. Then let's assume that the molar fraction of oxygen is gonna be, so let's assume that the mole fraction of oxygen is, what was the molar fraction that we studied? 18.18, so approximately, so let's say approximately 0 0.18, and the molar fraction of nitrogen is 0.82. So if it is the mixing ratio by mole between the mixture, then the partial pressure P of oxygen is going to be the mole fraction of oxygen times the total pressure. So in this case, the mole fraction is going to be 0.18. The mixture pressure is going to be 100 kilopascal. So the partial pressure of oxygen is going to be 18 
kilo pascal. On the other hand, the partial pressure of nitrogen, the other component in the system, can be determined by the same equation, P of nitrogen is Y of nitrogen times the total pressure, the mixture pressure. So in this case, this one is 100 kilopascal. What is the mole fraction? 0.82. So 0.82. Then the partial pressure of nitrogen is going to be 82 kilopascal. So for this ideal gas equation, the partial pressure of nitrogen is going to be 82 kilopascal. This P, the partial pressure of oxygen is going to be 18 kilopascal. Then what is the number of moles N of oxygen, N of nitrogen that you can determine by the previous N is M over M. So the number of moles of oxygen is going to be 0 0.00625. The number of moles of nitrogen is, is going to be 0 0.02856. So these are the numbers that we can Write them here, okay? So, if we use this equation, it is P3 is N R bar P. In this case, this N should be the, the component specific, so it's going to be N2, uh, uh, I'm sorry. This N is going to be N of oxygen, and this P is going to be the partial pressure of oxygen, P of oxygen. So these two are different, but the rest of them is going to be V. There's no V for oxygen, just for the volume. There is no R for oxygen, just universal R. There is no temperature for oxygen, just temperature. So that's how we write the ideal gas equation for each component. What about nitrogen? The partial pressure of nitrogen times the total volume is the number of moles of nitrogen times the universal gas constant R bar times temperature. So this is how we use either gas equation on a mixture. Okay, so when you have a mixture of two, this is how we write the ideal gas equation for oxygen and for the other component, nitrogen. Any question? Then one more slide before we, you know, the, uh, solve a practice problem together about this conversion between mass and the number of mole. Then how can we evaluate the total internal energy U, enthalpy H, entropy S? In thermodynamics one, we studied a single gas system. So if you want to determine, let's say, for the internal energy U, how do you determine this U? Mass times specific internal energy U. That's what we did. We, that's what we did in thermodynamics one. Now we have a mixture. If you have a mixture of two, let's say oxygen, and nitrogen. Then this U can be determined by two different ways. One, 
on a mass basis. U, the mixture internal energy can be determined by mass of oxygen times specific internal energy of oxygen plus mass of nitrogen times specific internal energy of nitrogen. So that's how we determine U. In this case, what is the unit of this mass? Kilogram. What is the unit of this specific internal energy? Kilojoule per kilogram. So what about this one? Kilogram times kilojoule per kilogram. Then you can see kilogram, 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 kilogram. So what is the unit of this U? Kilojoule. We can calculate this for the internal energy of the mixture on a molar basis. So the right hand side, we are going to say on a molar basis, then U is going to be what? Mass times U? No. Mass can be used on a mass basis. Now we have a molar basis. So not M, but N times specific internal energy. Then if you have a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen, U is going to be the number of moles of oxygen times specific internal energy of oxygen plus the number of moles of nitrogen times the specific internal energy of nitrogen. Then what is the unit of this number of mole? Kilomole. It's going to be kilomole. So kilomole. Then what is the unit of this U? Specific internal energy. Kilogram per kilo, uh, kilojoule per kilogram? No, we have a kilomole here. So the unit of this specific internal energy should be Kilojoule per kilomole. Then the question, this one has this unit. This one has this unit. So this U is different from this U, right? Then to distinguish between here and there, what we do? We add a bar on top of it to show that this is on a molar basis. We add a bar on top of it to show that this is on a mass ba uh, molar basis. So there's a bar on top of it. Then what is the unit of this capital U? Just kilojoule. Do we have to add a bar on top of it? No. This one is the same as this one. Because this one is not divided by mass. This one is not divided by kilomole. They, this one is the same as this one. Only the specific property is divided by either mass or kilomole. So we have to add a bar to distinguish between mass basis or molar basis. Okay. If it is enthalpy, same thing. H is going to be mass of oxygen times specific enthalpy of oxygen plus mass of nitrogen times specific enthalpy, uh, enthalpy of nitrogen. What about here? H is going to be mass or uh, the number of moles of oxygen times specific enthalpy on a molar basis. So I'm going to add a bar for oxygen plus the number of moles of nitrogen times specific enthalpy of nitrogen so that I'm, I'm adding these bars to show that this one is on a molar basis. What about entropy? Same thing. Now let's talk about uh, an intensive property. What about, you know, the specific heat? If you want to determine specific heat, Cp, how do we determine specific heat? C 
CP is per kilogram or per mole because these are intensive properties. So in this case, we can calculate in the same rule. However, we need to divide by the total mass. So mass of oxygen divided by mass, what is that? Mass fraction of oxygen times specific heat of oxygen plus mass fraction of nitrogen times specific heat of nitrogen. And what is the unit of each? This one has no unit. It is a fraction, 20%, 30%, 100%, so 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 1. This one also has no unit. What is the unit of this one? Kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Then what is the unit of this mixture specific heat? Kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. So you can see this CP is on a mass basis, which is different from this extensive property. This one is an intensive property divided by mass. What about specific heat on a molar basis? Instead of mass fraction, now we can use mole fraction. Y of oxygen times specific heat of oxygen plus Y of nitrogen times specific heat of nitrogen. However, this time it is on a molar basis. So we need to add a bar on top of it to show that the unit has kilomole instead of kilogram. So what is the unit of molar fraction? There's no unit of molar fraction. 20%, 30%, 50%. On the other hand, the unit of this specific heat on a, on a molar basis is going to be kilojoule per kilomole Kelvin. Then what is the unit of this one? Kilojoule per kilomole Kelvin. So now we need to add a bar here. So that's how we determine a mixture property. If it is an intensive property, such as specific heat, we need to use mass fraction or more, molar fraction. If it is an in extensive properties, such as U and H, we can use this mass and the number of more, okay? So that's everything about what we need to know between the conversion, yes. Because this one is on a molar basis. You see this kilomole, you see this kilogram. So this CP and this CP, they are not the same because they are intensive properties. On the other hand, this HU, they are extensive properties. Is there a kilogram? No. Is there a kilo more? No. So we don't have to add a bar. But for in intensive properties, we, ha we are going to have either kilogram or kilo more. So we need to add a bar to show that this one is different from this one. However, in this U, they are the same. This H, they are the same. So that's how we convert between uh, mass and the number of mole. I know it, it looks a little bit confusing. So the best way to understand is going to be solving a problem together. Okay. Any question up to now? We haven't started uh, some of the chapters yet. So this is just introduction to study thermodynamics too. So there are two chapters that we are going to study based on what we learned. The first chapter is about moist air, dry air and water vapor mixture. That's one chapter. The other chapter is going to be chemical reaction. We just studying, you know, the some, you know, the uh, uh, prerequisite materials to understand how to study those mixtures in the following chapters. Okay. So let's just study this one. So in thermodynamics too, you will see a mixture rather than a single system, 
if you want to study a single gas system, you can go back and EGR 31, uh, 356, which is easy. But you know the, uh, the, the, you know the, when you go out to the field, the majority of engineering systems use a mixture. So we are going to use this mixture analysis, but there's no difference between here and the governing equation the governing equations in thermodynamics one, the energy balance equation, the entropy balance equation, we are going to use the same. But the only difference is that now we have a mixture rather than a single gas system, okay? That makes applying energy balance equation, entropy balance equation complicated because we have a mixture. Okay, so we have a gas mixture with the molar analysis. The molar analysis of 20% propane, 80% air. That means that 20% is molar fraction, not mass fraction. 80% is the molar fraction. So 20%, 80%. So from here, we, we know we have a mixture and uh, the mole fraction of Propane C3H8 is going to be 0.2. The mole fraction of air is going to be 0.8. And it's a steady state control volume. So we have a inlet. So the air and propane enters this chamber and a mixture is going to exit the chamber. So we have two inlets, one exit. So there is a propane, and there's, uh, there's air, and a mixture leaves the chamber. So we have a propane and air. And location one, so that's inlet number one. So at inlet number one, we have a propane goes in. Inlet number two, we have air goes in. Exit number three, we have a mixture comes out. So the mass flow rate at location one, the mass flow rate of the inlet number one is going to be five kilogram per minute. So m dot of number one is going to be five kilograms per minute air enters as a separate stream at inlet number two and is going to be mixed with this propane a single stream exits with a more fraction of propane three percent assuming Oh, so there is a mixture goes in at number one. So not just propane, my bad, my bad. So these two goes in at number one. So let me make another chamber. So we have one inlet here, another inlet here. So there's a number one, there's a number two, and there's a number three. So at number one, we have a 20%, point 0.2 propane C3H8 and point 0.8 air. Oh, we want to assume air has a molar analysis of 21% oxygen, 79% nitrogen. That means we have power, uh, propane and 80% of air, so what is the mole fraction of oxygen? 80%, so 21% of 80%, so that is 0 0.8 times 0 0.21. That's the, that is the mole fraction of oxygen. And 
79% of nitrogen. So 80% of 79% is nitrogen. So these three goes in to number one. And we only have air entering the chamber at number two. So we have 21%, uh, 0.21 of oxygen and 0.79 of nitrogen. And at the exit, we have 3% is propane. So 0.03 is propane, C3H8. And so 97% at the exit is going to be air. So the oxygen at the exit is going to be 0 0.97 times 21%. 0 0.21 is oxygen and 0 0.97 times 79 percent 0.79 is nitrogen at the exit so that's what we know and we know the mass flow rate at the inlet number one and that number one is going to be five kilogram per minute so what do we need to determine we need to determine the molar flow rate of the entering air at number two. So let's apply mass balance equation first. M dot at number one plus M dot at number two should be M dot at number three. We agree that, right? Mass balance, conservation of mass principle. So, so there's M dot number two, which we don't know, and there's M dot number three, which we don't know, but we know M dot number one plus M dot number two is gonna be M dot number three. So this is the mass conservation. Then what we need to determine, we want to determine the molar flow rate. What is molar flow rate? M dot no, it is n dot. So n dot at the inlet number two is what we want to determine, okay? n dot. Then what we know is we know how to, you know, the, uh, we know the relation between the mass and the, the number of mole. Do we? Yes. N is N over molecular weight. So between these two, N is N over molecular weight. And we are talking about this one at the inlet number two. So can we say N2 is N2 divided by M2? Yes, we can. Then we are talking about flow rate, not you know the mass. We are talking about mass flow rate. So how do you get mass flow rate? Divide this by time. Divide this by time. So if you divide each term by time, then what do you get? N over T, the number of mole over time. That is molar flow rate. N dot number two. What is M2 over time? Mass flow rate. N dot over two divided by molecular weight. Then m dot number two is m dot number three minus m dot number one can we say yes so this one is going to be m dot number three minus m dot number one divided by the molecular weight at the inlet number two so from here so from here we have no idea about m dot number two and 
the molecular weight number two, but we know M dot number one, which is five kilogram per minute. So we have one information, one value is known that is five kilogram per minute. And we know another thing. What is M2? The molecular weight at the inlet number two. Can we determine the molecular weight of a mixture? Yes, we studied one equation. If you remember, this one. The molecular weight of a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen can be determined by the mole fraction of each component times the molecular weight of that component. So, the molecular weight at the inlet number two can be determined as long as you know the mole fraction and the molecular weight of each component. Then let's go back. Do we know the mole fraction at number two? Yes, 21% oxygen, 79% nitrogen. Do we know the molecular weight of oxygen and nitrogen? Yes, you can find those values from table A1, and we have oxygen here. This is the molecular weight of oxygen. We have a nitrogen here. This is the molecular weight of nitrogen. So we know the molecular weight of each component and the mole fraction of each component at the inlet number two, so we can determine this molecular weight number two. So let's do that. This M2 can be determined by the mole fraction of oxygen times the molecular weight of oxygen plus the mole fraction of nitrogen times the molecular weight of nitrogen. The mole fraction is going to be 0.21. So this one is 0.21. The mole fraction of nitrogen, 0.79. Do we know the molecular weight? Yes. 32 and 28.01. So this one is 32 kilogram per kilomole, and this one is 28.01 kilogram per kilomole. So we can determine M2. So if you do, M2 is, do I have it? 28.85. 28.85 kilogram per kilomole. So we got one number here. So this is what we want to determine. And this equation can be determined by this. So we know M dot number one, we know molecular weight at number two, the only unknown is M dot number three. So what we can do? We need to find a way to determine M dot number three. Do we have any information? No, but there's one clue. There's a propane and oxygen nitrogen at the inlet number one. There's a propane, oxygen, and nitrogen at the exit number three. But there is no propane at number two. Can you create or destroy propane in this chamber unless there is a chemical reaction? Assuming that there is no chemical reaction, the amount of propane should be constant, right? So, the mass of propane should be constant between number one and number three, or the number of moles of propane should be the same. So, which one is easier? We can use the number of moles. Because, is it mass fraction? No. It's a mole fraction. So it is convenient to use the number of moles.
So, what is, how do we determine that? Oh, I need a, I need a space. So, how much propane at pillar number one? 20%, 0.2. So 20% of molar flow rate at number one is the amount of propane, right? That 20%, the 20% is not a mass fraction. So we don't know, you know, that the mass fraction of propane, we only know the mole fraction of the propane. So 20% of number one. So 20%, 0.2 of number of moles at the inlet number one per unit time should be the same as only 3%, percent point or three at the exit number three. Can we say that? 20% is propane, 3% is propane. So 20% of number one, should be the same as 3% of number three. Am I right? Yes. Then can we say 20% of M dot number one is 3% of M dot number three. Is that right? 20% of propane, 3% of propane. So this one right or is this one right? This one? The red one is correct because the fraction is mole fraction, not a mass fraction. When I say 20% at number one is propane, that is 20% by mole, not 20% by mass. So the mass fraction, we have no idea. We only know the mole fraction. So we cannot use this equation. This is based on mass fraction. Of course, you can use N is M over M to determine the exact mass fraction of propane number one, the mass fraction of propane number three. You can do that, by the way. Then you can use this equation, of course, so the numbers will be different. When I say 20%, 3%, they are more fractions. So that's why we use N1, N3, not M1, M3. Then, how can we use this equation? Let's go back. Oops. We only know, we only know n dot instead of n dot. So you want to convert n dot into m dot. So how can we do that? n is n over molecular weight. So this one, n dot number one is gonna be N dot number one divided by molecular weight. Here, N dot number three is going to be N dot number three divided by molecular weight number three. Right? So, this equation can be written as 0.2 N dot number one divided by molecular weight number one is N as 0.03 N dot number three over molecular weight number three. Then the question is, can we determine M1 and M3? Yes, you can. What is the fraction? We know the mole fraction. So this M1 can be determined by 0.2. M1 can be determined by the mole fraction of propane times molecular weight of propane plus mole fraction of oxygen times molecular weight of oxygen plus mole fraction of nitrogen times molecular weight of nitrogen times the nitrogen that's how you can determine m1 so uh, mole fraction of propane 20 percent mole fraction of oxygen 0 0.8 times 0 0.21 mole fraction of nitrogen 0 0.8 times 0.79 what is the molecular weight of propane oxygen nitrogen Propane, 
44.09, oxygen 32, nitrogen 28.01. So this one is 44.09, 32, 28.01. So from here, you can determine M1, which is 31.9 kilogram per kilomole. Then we can do the same for number three. Y of propane, molecular weight of propane, Y of oxygen times molecular weight of oxygen plus Y of nitrogen times molecular weight of nitrogen. Then what is the mole fraction of propane? 0 0.03. So this one is 0 0.03. What is the mole fraction of oxygen? 0.97 times 0.21. The mole fraction of nitrogen, 0.97 times 0.79. Uh, the molecular weight, 44.09. Molecular weight, 32. Molecular weight, 28.01. So you can determine M3 is 29.31 kilogram per kilomole. So you can substitute this one back to this equation, this one back to this equation. Then what do you get? So this one here, it is 29.31. This one is 31.9. So from this, you can determine the ratio between m dot number three and m dot number one. And we already know m dot number one is five kilograms per minute. So this one is five kilograms per minute. What is M dot number three? 30.63 kilogram per minute. Now, going back to this equation, we have M dot number three, 30.63. So this one is 30.63 kilogram per minute. Then we can determine N dot number two. So N dot number two is, where is it? A 0.89 kilogram per kilomole per minute. So this is how you determine the molar flow rate. Ah, it looks a little bit complicated, right? Uh, I'm trying to, you know, to move these so you can see them all. Oh, now you can see them all, right? So if I give this problem in your first exam, can you solve it? <laughs> 